Hi guys, welcome to Parrot Playhouse. My name is April. This is the very shy, all of a sudden super shy Victoria Cockatoo that doesn't want to be on camera. She knows she's going somewhere. So we are on our way to VCA Eye Clinic for Animals in San Diego to see Dr. Struby. He is the ophthalmologist that literally saved baby my yellow mate. Amazon's eye. He was in so much pain and after like two years of searching, I found Dr. Struby and he just changed baby's life for the better. And then we're also going to see Steve. Steve is an RBT. He manages the hospital. He knows birds. He did baby's anesthesia. So he's going to be there, which makes me feel so good too. So be Victoria's going to have the dream team working on her today. And then in the car, I'm going to give her midazolam that I arranged with her veterinarian, Dr. Lattice. It's a few drops. It's going to sedate her. I've never done that. I'm to be honest with you. I'm really nervous about that. So let's just get there. I have no idea how this appointment's going to go, but number one, I am praying that Victoria's not in pain. If she is, I'm praying Dr. Struby can help her. Number two, I'm hoping that eye is not bulging, which it looks like it is. It's hard to tell. It's full of cataracts. And then it would also be great if there's a surgery, if Victoria could survive it, that will restore her sight. So that's a lot on Dr. Struby's plate. So let's see how this goes. Okay. So we're here and I'm going to have to give Victoria a drug in her nostril. It's midazolam and it has to be kept in the dark so it's in the console. I've never done this before you guys and honestly I'm scared. Um, yeah I'm, I'm like scared so oh oh. Isn't this insane? We're going to have you come in though, okay? You are? Yeah, for the whole exam. Okay. Um, okay. Um, so if you want to come in the lobby at any point, have a seat. We'll get with you. Okay. Okay. I feel better about this. This is, she's old. Yeah. No, we'll, we'll, we'll take good care of her. We're going to do the exam um, near our anesthetic machine. So in case she gets, for whatever reason, you know, compromised, we have the ability to get lost. Okay. Great. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to put her in. Okay, so we're gonna go inside. They don't want me in the car doing this. I feel so much better about this. I'm gonna wear a mask. We're gonna go inside, sweetie. Okay? I just love them. So hopefully this will facilitate a seamless exam. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's okay, Victoria. I'm right here. Right here, Victoria. You don't, yeah, we just, it was hard to tell. I, it does, okay, I think the cataracts makes it look like it's. Yeah, often when people see bulging, it's an optical illusion. Not always, but often. I'm glad. It's okay, Victoria, I'm right here. It's okay. Probably really looks weird since she can't see very well. Mm -hmm. I don't think she's ever had a light like that. I'm right here, VC. Feel the 
Are there any lights on we can turn off? We turn them all off. Yeah, for, uh, yeah, that's you think she'll be okay? Go ahead. Yeah, okay. I'm here, Victoria. Uh huh. Yeah, it's just because the cataract's more dense, so it makes the eye stand out more. I mean, your brain is pretty amazing, but it also is easy to fool. And if if you're looking at an eye, your brain tends to focus on whatever the light's reflecting off of. Well, the lens is clear. So when you're looking at an eye, you're going to see the iris, the color part of the eye, and then just a hole in the middle. If that hole in the middle has something white behind it, like a cataract, then it stands out a lot more. And so the eye without that looks deeper. The eye with that looks more forward to your brain. And it fools you into thinking that the eye is actually sticking out more, when it's really not. I'm so glad it's not. Yeah, so, so you got no glaucoma, no active inflammation, just a tiny little corneal degeneration spot on the one eye and cataracts in both, worse on the left than the right. Is she completely blind? The left eye, I think, can see light see shadows that? movement. Uh -huh. but no, the right eye can see figures and a little detail, but it's still pretty hazy. It's fog. Is there any surgery that can be done? Cataract surgery, as long as she's healthy enough to put under anesthesia. General is it a but big surgery? tricky. It is. Do you want me to hold her? Yeah. Victoria. Victoria, I'm right here. Most oh. Well, it's okay. Let me wrap you up. That way they're not moving her eye around. We're trying, we've got instruments inside of it. And if we do that, the hurl will kill her. Oh. So we can't paralyze her. So oh. we have to do okay. power surgery on the The other problem is. You have to dilate your pupil uh -huh. to get in there and okay. the cataract. The drugs you have to use to dilate a bird's pupil can par paralyze their whole body um, because they have skeletal muscle in their iris. And it's the same muscle they use to breathe to expand their chest, for example, if you walk around. Well, if you give them a drug to try to paralyze that skeletal muscle in their iris and dilate their pupil, it can stop their breathing. So, this is tricky. Yeah, so it's not like it's baby not surgery. Can't, yeah, it's not that you can't do it. It's just a lot trickier than a dog or a cat or a person. And especially with an older bird. Yeah, so I'm not sure it would be a great idea. But I mean, in the end, it's up to you and your vet. What you and your vet think. You yeah. think, is it worth it? And your vet is it a bad idea? And then if you both decide, yeah, it's worth it, and we think the bird can easily survive anesthesia, then I'd say go for it. If not, then I wouldn't recommend it. Okay. Well, um, but the good news is she can still see out of the right eye. And she's not in pain? No, not at all. Is there any drops we can do to slow this cataracts down? Or? No, um, there are no, dro there are no drops, okay. vitamins, right antioxidants, or anything we know of that has any effect on cataracts. That's actually been studied pretty extensively, at least in humans. I mean, thousands okay. of, of okay. people they've tested and, and they've found nothing that has any effect on the progression of a cataract, unless it's a diabetic cataract. Then you can potentially slow those down by controlling the diabetes and potentially by using a particular kind of drug that helps specifically with diabetic cataracts. But other than that, there's nothing we nothing. know of. So the big thing we do medically with cataracts is we try to prevent complications. So if the cataracts get bad enough that they start causing inflammation in the eye, which I don't see right now, then we can use anti-inflammatories like the ketorolac that you're using on your other bird. Oh, um, um, 
Oh, I stopped using that. I'm just using drops. Sure, but it, that we were using, oh, we could okay. use that on this one oh. to try to prevent cataract induced inflammation. But at the moment, it doesn't look necessary. Okay. So, the one thing I would recommend is a lubricating eye drop. Okay. Again, just like you were using on your other bird, because in the right eye, because of that tiny little corneal degeneration spot, Ooh. it help keep that from getting worse. I'll do that every night. Yeah, Should I do it once or twice? I do it twice a day. Twice a day. Gel lubricant, right eye only. Okay. The left eye doesn't need anything at the moment. That's what I'll do. And the drop, the the gel drops are okay, like for the dog and cat. If that's what yeah. I'm using. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. All right. Well, right. I, I guess I'll ask Dr. Lattice what he thinks about surgery. Is it base? Is it basically putting him putting her under the same way you did baby? But this sounds more aggressive. Uh, yeah, this is, so I, I don't remember with baby, we just did a diamond burst, yeah. so we probably just sedated, so probably she's quite light. 10, 10 minutes max under anesthesia where the cataract surgery is going to take upwards. At least a half hour. Oh, wow. Eye. Okay. Yeah. That's a while. Okay. So the longer you're under anesthesia. Bigger you chance know. you're not going to no. wake up for a bird. We, we pay attention from start to finish, but, it, you know, as, as you duration goes longer a lot of physiologic changes can occur. Yeah. Okay. Uh, All probably right. the safest thing to do if we were gonna do it would be to just do the left eye. And if things went well we could always consider doing the right eye later as it got worse. Uh, I like that idea. The okay. We would not be able to put lens implants in though. I I mean we would look into it, but I doubt very seriously that anyone has made a lens implant that would work for a cockatoo. Okay. Um, I haven't seen the studies to show what size implant would be appropriate, and I've never seen a avian implant on a list of what particular companies have to offer. But maybe I just wasn't looking. So, you know, we'll look oh. into it, but I would expect we would not be putting a lens in. So even though we would improve vision, it wouldn't go all the way back to what it was initially because it would be a little defocused. Okay, but better. All right, somebody, I'm gonna really think about that. Might be a good idea then. I'll ask Dr. Laz what he thinks. Thank you so much. And yeah, she's waking up. She's a sweetheart. Should I, can I wait here for a little bit in yeah. the front or wherever? In the, yeah, why don't you sit up in the lobby where it's sort of come. Okay. Okay, thank you. There's Victoria. She's a little sleepy. So she had a big appointment and it went really, really smooth. I am so happy. I was so nervous about it. She's still a little tired, but she's doing great. And she was sleepy when she got home. But that's to be expected because she was on the sedative, but she was not traumatized. She did really well. They did so good at VCA, I Clinic for Animals. I can't thank uh, Dr. Struby and Steve enough and staff. They were incredible. So we found out what we needed to know at that appointment. I'm so glad you guys got to come in the back, that we got to go in the back. Can you even believe that? I was like in shock. I was so stressed about that appointment, you guys. Victoria is such a high risk you know, that they recognize that. And I just love that. Like, they're so good there. So number one, we found out that Victoria Cockatoo is not in pain. So that was a big concern. Can you imagine her being in pain? Number two, we found out that that eye is not bulging. And I can't tell you how important it is, you guys, as you saw with baby my yellow nape Amazon's eye surgery that should have happened sooner. I could not find an ophthalmologist. I was looking, looking for two years that could take care of him, that could make him better. So now we know who is the guy, the ophthalmologist, we know where he's located. He's located in San Diego, California, at VCAI Clinic for Animals. But um, So I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't bulging, right? Parrot eye care is so important. Okay, so another thing is we know she's going blind. We know she has cataracts. And there is a surgery that can be done, but there are risks. I want to tell you why I want to have the surgery, why I, I still need to talk to her veterinarian. He's going to be out for a couple weeks to a month, two months, plural. So 
I'm praying that Dr. Lattice is okay. Um, but when he returns, I do want to talk to him about this because there's a lot to talk about. But let me tell you why I want to have this surgery, why it's so important. Maybe I'm overthinking it. For those of you who don't know, Victoria was abused before I got her. She was kept in a dark basement for years in blackness, darkness, no sunlight, no nothing, lack of food. She was treated horribly with some other birds that were in there. And what I'm thinking is as she starts to slip into blindness, is she going to start having PTSD thinking that she's back with that horrible woman again? as she goes into darkness again. All those years that she could have been seeing the sun, the flowers, you know, just the world. She was held prisoner in a dark room. And, you know, she lost so much time. And as her mom and as her rescuer, I, I just want to like give back all those years that she missed, right? I want to do everything I can to like fix what that woman did to her and and just giving her like the best life possible. Right, Thomas? Yeah? Now that I know that there is a surgery that can restore a good amount of her sight, but there is a, a risk, you know, I'm stuck with what do we do? Victoria's going on 48, can her little body handle it? That's the other thing. She's been under many surgeries, as you guys know. Um, can she handle this one? Can she handle at least the eye that's really bad? So that's the question. Um, Steve would be in there with her, monitoring her. And as he told me, if you know vitals started dropping, if things started happening, just pull out, wake her up, and get her out of that situation. Um, so I would love, she loves to see the sun. She loves to see the flowers. She just loves to see things because those are things she didn't have before. So we will see what's going to happen, you guys. I want to do what's best for her. I want to give Victoria quality of life. Like, like what you have. Right, Thomas? Yes. And it, it just, it's just a big decision that I have to make with my veterinarian. Because, I mean, she's not in pain right now. She can live a good life. Um, we can make her cage into a handicap cage, no problem. But if I can steal more time of eyesight for her, I want to do it. But then at the same time, I don't want to lose her or cause her any pain. So there's a lot to think about. All right, guys, so that is the update on Victoria Cockatoo. Now you know why I want her to be able to see so badly. Um, I'm super happy she's not in pain. That's good. Yes. And uh, one day at a time for Victoria Cockatoo. And I think right now the sun is calling her. Do you wanna go outside? Yeah. She is such a good girl. She is such a good girl. Yeah, you're such a good girl. I love you. All right, guys. Bye. Bye. What? Okay. Bye. <laughs> Thomas, you're so funny.